Welcome to Uncle Al's Bookshelf, the channel where we help you discover the world's greatest stories in just a few minutes. Whether you're a busy book lover who doesn't have time for long reads, or you simply want to explore the highlights of classic literature, this is the place for you. I'm your host, Uncle Al, and in each video, I'll take you on a journey through the most beloved books of all time, giving you a quick overview of their plots, characters, themes, and literary styles. So sit back, relax, and get ready to join me on a trip through the pages of history's most enduring works. In today's video, we are going to talk about The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts book. It was written by Gary Chapman and was first published in 1992. The book discusses the five primary love languages that people use to express and receive love. Words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Chapman suggests that individuals have a primary love language that they prefer to receive love in, and that understanding and speaking their partner's love language is crucial for a successful and fulfilling relationship. The book has sold millions of copies worldwide and has been translated into over 50 languages. Chapter 1 titled, What Happens to Love After the Wedding? In this chapter, author Gary Chapman discusses the common experience of couples who experience a decline in their romantic feelings after getting married. Chapman starts by explaining that the initial in love feeling that couples experience during the early stages of a relationship is often based on infatuation rather than genuine love. This is his infatuation is driven by the release of certain hormones that create intense feelings of attraction and euphoria, which can lead individuals to overlook their partner's flaws and idealize the relationship. However, this feeling usually fades after a period of time and the relationship may start to feel less exciting and more routine. According to Chapman, this is where the real work of love begins. He argues that lasting love is a choice and requires effort and intentional action from both partners. One key factor in sustaining love is communication. Couples need to learn how to communicate effectively and openly with each other about their needs, desires, and concerns. Chapman introduces the concept of love languages, which he defines as the different ways that individuals give and receive love. He suggests that each person has a primary love language, which is the way they most prefer to receive love from their partner. By understanding each other's love languages, couples can learn how to better express and receive love in a way that feels meaningful to both partners. To help readers identify their own love languages, Chapman includes a quiz in the book that asks a series of questions designed to determine which of the five love languages words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch resonates most with them. He also suggests that couples take the quiz together and discuss their results to gain a better understanding of each other's needs. You can find a link to the quiz in the description below. If you are reading this book with your partner, take the love language quiz together and discuss your results. Share what you learned about each other's primary love languages and brainstorm ways that you can incorporate these love languages into your daily interactions with each other. Another important aspect of sustaining love, according to Chapman, is to make time for each other. Couples should prioritize spending quality time together, even in the midst of busy schedules and competing demands. Chapman suggests setting aside specific times each week for date nights or other activities that allow couples to connect and bond. For example, you can plan a date night with your partner and make a commitment to have regular date nights going forward. Discuss what activities you both enjoy and try to incorporate elements of each other's love languages into your date night. Chapter one of the five love languages sets the stage for the rest of the book by introducing the idea that love is a choice that requires effort and intentional action. By understanding each other's love languages, couples can better communicate and express love in a way that feels meaningful to both partners. Chapter 2 titled, Keeping the Love Tank Full. In this chapter, author Gary Chapman discusses the importance of filling your partner's love tank by expressing love in their primary love language. Chapman explains that everyone has a love tank, which represents their emotional fuel for feeling loved and appreciated. When the love tank is full, individuals feel more secure, happy, and fulfilled in their relationship. Conversely, when the love tank is empty, Individuals may feel neglected, unappreciated, and resentful. According to Chapman, expressing love in a partner's primary love language 
is the most effective way to fill their love tank. He suggests that individuals should make a conscious effort to learn their partner's love language and to express love in that way regularly. Chapman also discusses the importance of showing love through physical touch. He explains that physical touch can help individuals feel connected, comforted, and reassured in their relationship. He notes that different types of physical touch may be more meaningful to different individuals, depending on their primary love language. To help readers understand how to fill their partner's love tank, Chapman includes several practical examples of ways to express love in each of the five love languages. For example, for individuals whose primary love language is words of affirmation, Chapman suggests regularly telling their partner how much they appreciate and admire them. For individuals whose primary love language is quality time, Chapman suggests planning activities together that allow for meaningful conversations and connection. Chapman also cautions readers about actions that may deplete their partner's love tank, such as criticism, neglect, and unfaithfulness. He emphasizes that maintaining a full love tank requires consistent effort and intentional action. Take some time to reflect on your own love language and think about ways that your partner has expressed love in that way. Express your gratitude and appreciation to your partner for those actions. Another practical exercise Chapman suggests is to keep a love tank journal. This involves regularly noting down acts of love that your partner has done for you, as well as acts of love that you have done for your partner. This can serve as a reminder of the ways that you express love to each other and can help you maintain a full love tank. You can start a love tank journal and commit to regularly writing down acts of love that you and your partner have done for each other. Review the journal together periodically to remind yourselves of the ways that you express love in each other's primary love languages. Overall, Chapter 2 emphasizes the importance of filling your partner's love tank by expressing love in their primary love language. By regularly showing love in this way, individuals can help their partner feel more secure, happy, and fulfilled in the relationship. Chapter 3 of the Five Love Languages is titled Falling in Love. In this chapter, author Gary Chapman discusses the experience of falling in love and how it relates to the concept of love languages. Chapman explains that falling in love is a powerful emotional experience that involves intense feelings of attraction, infatuation, and excitement. He notes that these feelings are often temporary and that the experience of falling in love eventually fades. However, he suggests that it is possible to maintain the feelings of love and passion by expressing love in each other's primary love languages. Chapman suggests that falling in love is often accompanied by a feeling of being in sync with the other person. He notes that this feeling can be attributed to the fact that each person is unconsciously speaking the other's love language. He explains that this leads to a sense of connection and understanding that can be difficult to replicate in other relationships. Chapman notes that while falling in love is often portrayed as a spontaneous and unpredictable event, there are certain factors that can increase the likelihood of falling in love. These factors include physical attraction, emotional vulnerability, and shared experiences. To help readers understand how to maintain the feelings of love and passion that come with falling in love, Chapman suggests several practical exercises. These exercises are designed to help individuals identify their own love language and express love in their partner's primary love language. One practical exercise Chapman suggests is to identify your own love language by reflecting on what makes you feel loved and appreciated. He notes that individuals may have a primary love language as well as a secondary one. Once individuals have identified their own love language, Chapman suggests expressing love to their partner in that way. Reflect on your own love language and identify specific ways that your partner can express love in that way. Communicate these ideas to your partner and encourage them to express love in your primary love language. Chapman also suggests actively learning about your partner's love language and expressing love in that way regularly. He notes that this can involve making a conscious effort to observe your partner's preferences and to adapt your behavior accordingly. A further practical exercise Chapman suggests is to spend quality time together doing activities that both partners enjoy. This can help create shared experiences and deepen the connection between partners. Moreover, you can plan a date or activity that incorporates both of your interests. Take turns planning these activities to ensure that both partners have opportunities to express love in their primary love languages. 
Chapter 3 emphasizes the importance of maintaining the feelings of love and passion that come with falling in love. By making a conscious effort to learn about and express love in each other's love languages, individuals can deepen their connection and maintain the feelings of love and passion that come with falling in love. Chapter 4 Love Language Number 1 Words of Affirmation In this chapter, author Gary Chapman explores the importance of verbal communication in expressing love. Chapman explains that individuals who speak the love language of words of affirmation value verbal expressions of love and appreciation. They feel loved and appreciated when their partner expresses affection through words of praise, gratitude, and encouragement. Chapman notes that individuals who speak the love language of words of affirmation may be particularly sensitive to criticism and negative feedback. He suggests that it is important to provide feedback in a constructive and supportive way and to balance negative feedback with positive affirmations. To help readers understand how to express love through words of affirmation, Chapman suggests several practical exercises. These exercises are designed to help individuals learn how to express love and appreciation through verbal communication. One practical exercise Chapman suggests is to use positive affirmations to build up your partner. He suggests making a list of positive traits and behaviors that you appreciate in your partner and using these as a basis for verbal affirmations. Chapman notes that it is important to be specific in your affirmations and to use language that is sincere and heartfelt. Another practical exercise Chapman suggests is to practice active listening. He notes that individuals who speak the love language of words of affirmation often value quality conversation and attentive listening. By actively listening to your partner, you can show that you value their thoughts, feelings, and opinions. You can also practice active listening by focusing on your partner when they are speaking. Avoid distractions such as electronic devices or other activities, and show your partner that you are fully engaged in the conversation by asking questions and offering thoughtful responses. Chapman also suggests using written communication to express love and appreciation. He notes that written communication can be particularly powerful as it allows individuals to express themselves in a thoughtful and deliberate way. Write a letter or note to your partner expressing your love and appreciation. Use specific examples to illustrate your points and take the time to craft a thoughtful and heartfelt message. Chapter 4 emphasizes the importance of verbal communication in expressing love, particularly for individuals who speak the love language of words of affirmation. By learning how to use positive affirmations, practicing active listening, and using written communication, individuals can express love and appreciation in meaningful ways that strengthen their relationship. Chapter 5 Love Language Number 2 Quality Time this chapter focuses on the second love language identified by author Gary Chapman, which is quality time. Chapman explains that individuals who speak the love language of quality time value focused, undivided attention from their partner. This means spending time together without distractions or interruptions. When someone with this love language receives this type of attention from their partner, they feel loved and valued. The author also notes that quality time can take many forms, such as sharing experiences, having deep conversations, or simply spending time in each other's presence. It is important to prioritize quality time as a regular part of the relationship to maintain a strong emotional connection. Chapman suggests several practical exercises to help individuals learn how to express love through quality time. Plan regular outings or activities that allow you to spend focused quality time together. This could include date nights, weekend getaways, or even just taking a walk together. Quality time involves not only spending time together, but also actively engaging with each other through conversation. Practice active listening by giving your partner your undivided attention and asking thoughtful questions. In order to fully connect with your partner during quality time, it is important to disconnect from distractions like phones, social media, and other technology. Set aside time to be fully present with each other without interruptions. Chapman also notes that there are some common mistakes to avoid when trying to express love through quality time. These include being physically present but mentally absent, neglecting to plan quality time together, and prioritizing work or other obligations over time with your partner. Overall, Chapter 5 emphasizes the importance of focused, undivided attention in expressing love, 
particularly for individuals who speak the love language of quality time. By planning special outings, practicing active listening, and disconnecting from technology, individuals can express love and appreciation in meaningful ways that strengthen their relationship. Chapter 6. Love Language Number 3. Receiving Gifts. This chapter focuses on the third love language identified by author Gary Chapman, which is receiving gifts. Chapman explains that individuals who speak the love language of receiving gifts feel loved and valued when their partner gives them a thoughtful, meaningful gift. It is not about the monetary value of the gift, but rather the thought and effort put into selecting and giving the gift. The gift serves as a physical symbol of love and affection. The author notes that giving gifts can take many forms, such as a small, thoughtful item, a surprise gift, or a heartfelt letter. It is important to be intentional about gift giving and to make it a regular part of the relationship. Chapman suggests several practical exercises to help individuals learn how to express love through gift giving. Pay attention to your partner's interests. Take note of your partner's hobbies, interests, and preferences. Use this information to select thoughtful gifts that show you have been paying attention to what they enjoy. Surprise your partner with unexpected gifts or gestures. This can be as simple as leaving a note or small gift on their pillow, or as elaborate as planning a surprise weekend getaway. Sometimes the best gift you can give is the gift of your time. Plan quality time together doing something your partner enjoys, or take on a task that they typically handle to give them a break. Chapman also notes that there are some common mistakes to avoid when trying to express love through gift giving. These include giving generic or thoughtless gifts, neglecting to give gifts altogether, and giving gifts as a way to manipulate or control your partner. Overall, Chapter 6 emphasizes the importance of thoughtful gift giving in expressing love, particularly for individuals who speak the love language of receiving gifts. By paying attention to your partner's interests, surprising them with unexpected gifts or gestures, and giving the gift of time, individuals can express love and appreciation in meaningful ways that strengthen their relationship. Chapter 7. Love Language Number 4. Acts of Service. This chapter focuses on the fourth love language identified by author Gary Chapman, which is acts of service. Chapman explains that individuals who speak the love language of acts of service feel loved and appreciated when their partner does things for them that make their life easier or more comfortable. This can include things like doing household chores, running errands, or taking care of practical tasks. The author notes that acts of service can be particularly important for couples who have busy schedules or who are facing stressful situations. When one partner takes on tasks to help lighten the load for the other, it can strengthen the relationship and increase feelings of love and appreciation. Chapman suggests several practical exercises to help individuals learn how to express love through acts of service. Take note of your partner's needs. Pay attention to the things your partner needs help with, whether it's household chores, errands, or other practical tasks. Make an effort to take on these tasks without being asked. Anticipate your partner's needs. Sometimes your partner may not realize they need help with something until it becomes overwhelming. Try to anticipate their needs and offer help before they ask. Focus on small acts of service. Acts of service don't have to be grand gestures. Small acts, like making your partner's favorite meal or offering to pick up something they need from the store, can go a long way in expressing love and appreciation. Chapman also notes that there are some common mistakes to avoid when trying to express love through acts of service. These include making assumptions about what your partner needs, neglecting to follow through on commitments, and expecting something in return for your acts of service. Chapter 7 emphasizes the importance of acts of service in expressing love, particularly for individuals who speak the love language of acts of service. By taking note of your partner's needs, anticipating their needs, and focusing on small acts of service, individuals can express love and appreciation in meaningful ways that strengthen their relationship. Chapter 8 of the Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman focuses on the fifth love language physical touch. The author believes that physical touch is a powerful way of communicating love, affection, and care for one's partner. 
Physical touch can create a feeling of security and love in an individual, especially when they are feeling emotionally vulnerable. The author starts by explaining that physical touch can include non-sexual as well as sexual touch, and can be as simple as holding hands, giving a hug, or even a pat on the back. Physical touch is an important aspect of our lives and can positively affect our well-being. Touch can reduce stress, increase immunity, and promote healing, among other benefits. The author goes on to explain that individuals have different needs and preferences when it comes to physical touch. Some may crave physical touch constantly, while others may only desire it occasionally. The key is to understand your partner's preferences and to communicate with them about how you can meet their physical touch needs. The chapter also highlights the importance of touch in relationships, where one partner's primary love language is physical touch. It is crucial to meet this need for them to feel loved and valued in the relationship. Failure to do so can lead to feelings of rejection and emotional distance. Practical exercises to help individuals identify their partner's physical touch needs include the touch test. Have your partner identify areas on their body that they like to be touched and those they don't. This exercise will help you understand your partner's preferences and avoid doing something that may make them feel uncomfortable. Sensory awareness. Pay attention to how your partner reacts to different types of touch. Does a hug make them feel more loved and secure? or does holding hands make them feel more connected? Use this information to adjust your physical touch accordingly. Communication. Talk to your partner about their physical touch needs and preferences. Ask them what types of touch they enjoy and how often they like to receive it. This will help you better understand their needs and meet them more effectively. Surprise touch. Surprise your partner with a gentle touch, like a kiss on the forehead or a hand on the shoulder. These small gestures can have a big impact on your partner's emotional well-being. Physical touch challenge. Make a conscious effort to give your partner more physical touch throughout the day. Try to hold hands more often, give them a hug when they come home, or cuddle while watching TV. This will help reinforce your love and affection for them through physical touch. Overall, the chapter emphasizes the importance of physical touch in relationships and the need to understand and meet one's partner's physical touch needs to create a strong and fulfilling relationship. Chapter 9 of the Five Love Languages focuses on helping readers discover their primary love language. The author emphasizes that everyone has a different primary love language, and understanding this can help partners communicate their love more effectively. The chapter begins with a discussion of why it's important to identify your primary love language and provides several scenarios to help readers identify their love language. The author suggests that the best way to determine your love language is to observe how you express love to others and how you like to receive love. For example, if you find yourself always giving verbal affirmations to others or seeking verbal affirmations from your partner, your primary love language may be words of affirmation. Similarly, if you value spending quality time with loved ones and feel most loved when someone gives you undivided attention, your primary love language may be quality time. The chapter provides practical exercises to help readers discover their primary love language. One exercise involves reflecting on past relationships and identifying what made you feel loved and appreciated. Another exercise involves taking note of what you request most often from your partner or what you criticize them for not doing. This can provide insight into what you value most in a relationship and what your primary love language may be. The author emphasizes that discovering your primary love language is not a one-time event and may change throughout your life. It's important to continually communicate with your partner about your needs and love language and to be open to learning about their love language as well. One practical exercise suggested in the chapter is to take the official love language quiz which can be found on the author's website for which we added the link in the description. The quiz asks a series of questions about your preferences for giving and receiving love and provides a ranking of your primary love language. Another exercise involves creating a list of specific actions that make you feel loved and sharing it with your partner to help them better understand how to communicate their love effectively. Overall, Chapter 9 emphasizes the importance of understanding your primary love language and communicating this to your partner. By doing so, you can improve the quality of your relationship and better meet each other's emotional needs.
Chapter 10 is titled, Love is a Choice. In this chapter, Chapman emphasizes that love is not just a feeling, but also a choice. He explains that while feelings of love can come and go, choosing to love someone despite those feelings is what leads to lasting relationships. Chapman discusses how we can choose to love our partners through intentional actions that align with their love language. He suggests that in order to truly love someone, we need to be willing to learn their love language and make an effort to speak it regularly. He also notes that choosing to love someone means accepting them for who they are, flaws and all, and making a commitment to them. To help readers understand how to put this concept into practice, Chapman offers some practical exercises. One exercise he suggests is to list out the things you love about your partner and the things you don't. Then he encourages readers to choose to focus on the positive and express appreciation for those things they love rather than dwelling on the negatives. Another exercise is to make a list of things you can do to show love to your partner in their love language. For example, if your partner's love language is acts of service, you might make a list of tasks you could do to help them out or make their life easier. Chapman also notes that choosing to love someone means making sacrifices for them. He suggests thinking about ways you can make small sacrifices for your partner, such as giving up something you enjoy in order to spend time with them doing something they enjoy. In summary, this chapter emphasizes the idea that love is a choice and that choosing to love someone means making intentional efforts to speak their love language, accepting them for who they are, and making sacrifices for their well-being. The practical exercises provided can help readers put this idea into practice in their own relationships. Chapter 11 discusses how love can make a significant difference in a person's life. The author explains that love has the power to transform individuals, relationships, and even communities. Chapman emphasizes the importance of expressing love to those around us and making it a priority in our lives. Chapman points out that the most common issue that couples face is feeling unloved or unappreciated by their partner. This lack of love and affection can lead to resentment and ultimately the breakdown of the relationship. The author stresses that expressing love in the right way can prevent these negative outcomes and improve the quality of the relationship. One way to show love according to Chapman is through the use of positive affirmations. These affirmations can include verbal compliments, notes, or even small gifts. The author advises readers to make a list of things they appreciate about their partner and to express those things regularly. This exercise can help the partners to focus on the positive aspects of the relationship and strengthen their bond. Chapman also emphasizes the importance of forgiveness in relationships. He states that forgiveness is necessary for healing, and without it, resentment can fester and damage the relationship. The author suggests that individuals make a conscious effort to forgive their partners for any wrongdoings and to let go of any negative feelings. Another aspect of expressing love is prioritizing the relationship. Chapman advises couples to make time for each other, even in the midst of busy schedules. This can include date nights, weekend getaways, or even just a quiet evening at home. By prioritizing the relationship, partners can strengthen their bond and show their love for each other. One practical exercise to apply the ideas from this chapter is to take the time to express love and appreciation to your partner every day. This can be done through verbal compliments, notes, or small gifts. Make a list of things you appreciate about your partner and try to express at least one thing from that list each day. Additionally, plan regular date nights or outings to prioritize the relationship and make time for each other. Finally, practice forgiveness by letting go of any negative feelings and making a conscious effort to forgive any wrongdoings. Overall, the key message of this chapter is that love is a powerful force that can make a significant difference in individuals and relationships. By expressing love in the right way, prioritizing the relationship, and practicing forgiveness, couples can strengthen their bond and improve the quality of their relationship. Chapter 12 of the Five Love Languages discusses the challenges of loving difficult people, including those who are abusive, manipulative, or unresponsive. The author emphasizes the importance of showing love even in the face of difficult circumstances and suggests practical ways to do so. The chapter begins by discussing the challenges of loving those who are unlovely. According to the author, 
It is easy to love those who are kind and loving in return, but much harder to show love to those who are mean, rude, or unresponsive. However, he argues that it is precisely in these situations that love is most needed and most powerful. The author suggests several practical ways to love difficult people. First, he suggests setting clear boundaries to protect oneself from abuse or manipulation. However, he emphasizes that these boundaries should be set with the goal of ultimately showing love and healing the relationship, rather than simply cutting the person off. Second, he suggests practicing forgiveness, even in the face of great hurt. The author argues that forgiveness is not necessarily about letting the other person off the hook, but rather about freeing oneself from the burden of anger and resentment. Third, the author suggests looking for ways to show love even in small ways, such as through acts of service or words of affirmation. He argues that these small acts of kindness can help to break down barriers and begin to heal the relationship. Finally, the author emphasizes the importance of recognizing that loving difficult people is ultimately a choice. It requires a willingness to put aside one's own pride and ego and to focus on the well-being of the other person. To put this into practice, think of a difficult person in your life, whether it be a family member, friend, or co-worker. Write down one specific act of love that you can do for this person this week. It could be a small act of service, a kind word, or simply taking the time to listen. Practice forgiveness and set boundaries if needed to protect yourself, but try to approach the situation with a willingness to love and heal the relationship. Chapter 13 of the Five Love Languages focuses on how love languages apply to children. According to the author, children also have their own love languages, and parents need to learn how to communicate with them effectively to make sure they feel loved. The chapter begins by discussing the importance of creating a loving and nurturing environment for children. Children who feel loved and secure are more likely to have positive self-esteem and develop healthy relationships with others. The author then goes on to describe the five love languages and how they apply to children. Words of affirmation. Children need to hear positive and encouraging words from their parents. This can include praising them for their accomplishments, acknowledging their efforts, and telling them how much they are loved. Take time each day to verbally affirm your child. Look for opportunities to give them compliments or praise, and make sure to tell them how much you love them. Quality time. Children thrive on one-on-one -on -one time with their parents. This can involve playing games, reading books, or just talking about their day. Plan a special activity or outing with your child, such as a picnic in the park or a trip to the zoo. Make sure to give them your undivided attention and enjoy the time together. Gifts. While material possessions are not the most important thing, giving children small gifts can be a way to show them that you care. This can be as simple as a favorite snack or a new book. Surprise your child with a small gift or treat. It doesn't have to be expensive, just something to show that you were thinking of them. Acts of service. Children feel loved when their parents do things for them. This can involve anything from making their favorite meal to helping with homework. Look for ways to serve your child. Offer to help them with a task or chore or simply do something nice for them without being asked. Physical touch. Children need physical affection from their parents, whether it's a hug, a kiss, or just holding their hand. Make sure to give your child plenty of hugs and physical affection. Take time to snuggle together, hold hands, or simply be close to one another. The chapter also discusses how parents can identify their child's primary love language. This can involve observing how the child responds to different forms of affection and paying attention to what makes them feel loved and valued. Finally, the author emphasizes the importance of expressing love to children in a way that they can understand and receive. By understanding their love language, parents can ensure that their children feel loved, valued and supported, which can have a positive impact on their emotional well-being and future relationships. In the five love languages, the secret to love that lasts, Gary Chapman emphasizes that every individual has a unique way of giving and receiving love. He proposes that people primarily express and feel loved through five love languages, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. 
Throughout the book, Chapman provides numerous examples and practical exercises to help readers identify their own love language and the love languages of their partners. He emphasizes that understanding and speaking each other's love languages is crucial for a healthy and lasting relationship. Chapman also stresses that love is a choice, not just a feeling, and that it takes effort and commitment to maintain a healthy relationship. He encourages readers to continuously learn and grow in their relationships by learning and practicing each other's love languages. Overall, The Five Love Languages is a valuable resource for anyone seeking to improve their relationships, whether they are in a romantic partnership, a family setting, or any other interpersonal dynamic. The practical exercises and real-life examples make the concepts easy to understand and apply, and the emphasis on the importance of intentional effort in relationships is a refreshing reminder in today's fast-paced world. And that's it for today's episode of Uncle Al's Bookshelf. I hope you enjoyed this quick summary of another timeless classic and that you discovered something new about the world of literature. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. What did you think of today's selection? Did we miss anything important? Is there a specific book you'd like us to cover next? Let us know and join the conversation. Also, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your fellow book lovers. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel to stay up to date with our latest book summaries and literary insights. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Uncle Al's Bookshelf.